Um, the presenter, it's uh, a gentleman who has spent over 28 years in uh, the oil and gas industry and um, he has to his credit um, a degree in chemical engineering and also um, in uh, business administration. Uh, he is uh, currently the deputy manager in the petrochemicals plants. And so, if we're talking petrochemicals and the product here, you can be rest assured that you are listening to an expert in the matter. So, I'd like to invite um, Mr. Muse Ario to please um, come forward to this presentation. So many things that is in common black. So you see that you are not 
Yes, so like I was, okay, I was putting this slide just before I got there. Count by fire, count back is used in the manufacture of tires. It has been said that tires run on carbon black. Tires run on carbon black. The only thing is that the, the, the rubber helps in pulling it together. So the, one of the uses, the major uses of carbon black is in tires. When I say tread and carcass there, it's to find out that if you touch the tire, the average tire, one side is soft, the other side is hard. The soft black is an extension that we will have gone into, but we are planning on doing that as we move along. So the tires are made up of two types of ground black. The hard black, the one that is actually uh, touching the ground, that really helps us in having the traction, and also the one that is by the side, which is soft black. And the ground black also find uses in belts. Some of them are black. So there you can't explain ground black all the way. You find the uses in belts and horses. Horses, you find that when you, you, you check some vehicles, most vehicles find that the color of the, of the horses are black. That's the one black. It is part of the pigment that is used in making that, uh, that those horses. Batteries, gases, wires, the, 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 the wire, printing inks, all over. We have to uh, come back by using many things. The printing inks, the paints, carbon paper, and also textile. And also, it is used in the food industry. Many people wonder. Oh, but maybe I let the cards out of the bag when I wrote the Tom Tom there. Fine, many people wonder. Ah, food industry, when you, why food? But Tom Tom, you have some amount of Tom like that is inside the Tom Tom that we need. So it's fine to be used in the, also in the food industry. The reactors, like I was saying, the Tom Black reactors is, in, in the reactor is the heart of the whole process. The Tom Black fire, the Tom Black is made. Right? The Tom Black, any spec that is not obtained in the Tom Black, in the reactor, cannot be changed anywhere else in the process. So that means the reactor is the most important piece of equipment, even though we have several equipment in the, in the plant. And it's the heart of the plant, just like it can be said there. There are five, react, five tubular shaped reactors that we have in the plant there. It is designed to run four at any one time, and then one as spare. Maybe it could be carrying out maintenance in them, in the other particular one. And uh, although we find ourselves using two, but most of these is because of some exigency, but the plant was designed for four reactors, and that is the only way we can make our 18,000 metric tons per, per year capacity. And because the reactors are operated at a temperature of within 1,100 and 1,300 degrees centigrade, you can see that is an elevated temperature. Even in the refinery, you don't have such high temperature. But it's only in the perichemical plant, like in the carbon black plant, you have elevated temperature of 1,100, 1,300, at times you're going to 1,400 degrees centigrade. And because of that, you have to refractory line the reactor. You have to refractory line it because only when it has refractory can withstand the heat. Average metal will melt at 600 degrees centigrade. So, because of the nature of the te elevated temperature in the reactor, we have to refractory line it. And there is also, you will see the composition of the reactor section as we are going along. But you said that at the vaporization, the vaporization section, it, there is a the, 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 We have a special section in the reactor. It is in compartments. We have the pre-combustion, we have the combustion, and then we have the cooling section. So part of it is what you have as the prioritization section there. And then the, this squad, the, the, the practice is such that it is made up of many types of materials. It is such that it has to be able to, uh, the practice, are, are, some of them are precast and some of them are castables. What do I mean by precast and castables? Precasts are, they are like bricks, insulating bricks that have been precast down. And the castable is one that we have to pour in the refractory. So uh, they are all components of what we use in the making of the refractory of the, of the reactor. And uh, the properties are so, some of the qualities that you expect that refractory will have are refractiveness, how much shock resistance. Because the refractory that we select for the reactor should have these qualities. If they don't, it will quickly wear away. It must have resistance to thermal shock, it must have spot resistance, it must also have erosion resistance. And in doing all those things, they carefully selected the type of refractory that we use for the reactor. You find out that when you go to, the, for example, the FCC, the catalyst and the refractory they use there for their own reactor section is different from what we use because of our elevated temperature. And then the, 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 the liner is back with high temperature castable refractory, just like I said before, and it's supported, supported by carbon steel structure. And like I said, that this carbon steel structure cannot withstand more than 600 degrees centigrade. Next slide. In continuation of our reactor, because I said that the reactor is the heart of the plant, if you cannot get the specification 
in the, re the reactor, we cannot correct it at any other point. So that's why we spend a lot of time ensuring that our compound, our, our, our spec, we get it right in the flow of what we use in the reactor. What are the flows I said earlier on? We use the canted oil. That is the, some people call it the oil that we don't use anymore. In the primary, uh, the bottom of the XCC oil, that's the, 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 the sloppy. If they don't have use for it, they, say they, will, they will sell it as well oil. They're using burning there, they're using uh, firing their, their heaters. But for it to be able to be used in the, in the, in the peritomial, peritomial plant, that is where actually the boiler addition comes in. And then the, the part of what we use again in the reactor, like I said earlier on, the air and also the natural gas. Of course, we, the, the temperature when we see that at the point of 1,100, 1,300 degrees centigrade, we expect that there will be some combustion there. Yes, we use natural gas and air. First of all, have our own elevated temperature. Then we inject, we inject the uh, decanted oil into the flame. We, we don't pump it there. We just inject it into the fine flame, and it has efficient contact with the flame. And that is only when you can control the, the, the reaction. If you don't, if you just pump it in, it will most mostly you have carbon, carbonaceous bridge, and it will just sit down and block the whole place. So. The reaction, like I said, we are still continuing. It is still part of what we are talking about. The reactor is the heart of the whole process. Reactors are designed to operate in such a manner that the temperature and concentration of active ingredients in the critical, in the critical forming zones are controlled to produce carbon black with very definite properties at the highest possible yield. What do you mean by that? We are saying that as we are injecting the, the canted oil into the high temperature caused by the air and, and the natural gas, which will get our temperature up to 1,100, 1,200 degrees centigrade, we inject the decanted oil. And we also have to inject some other things that will define the character of the contract that we want. Later on, we will get to know the different types of decanted oil that we have. We have different grades. So if you want a particular grade, you have to, you have to influence the surface area and the structure of the decanted oil. In our own ordinary eye, if you look at it, you cannot see it. But under microscope, the decanted oil of different, uh, sorry, the count black of different grades have different structures, different surface area. And that is what determines what the customer actually wants. That's what determines what they use for the tire, for example, in the tire industry. So the part of the additive we use is potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate helps us to determine the structure by the concentration of the decanted oil that we inject and also the flow. You either increase or reduce depending on the type of grade that we want. That is for the structure. The surface area is also part of what we check. We'll see all these points later on in this slide. The surface area also determines the kind of grade of black that we it is, it, it, If the desired quality of the hydrocarbon black cannot attain in the reactor, it is not possible to use any time in the process. Like I said, if you missed it in the reactor, sorry, it just goes out of those are another great, and you have to get it right again. Like I was saying, this is the actual, this is a typical reactor. You can see the, 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 the section of it. This is what is the reactor looks like. But you can see that all these are refractive. Because, like I said, they are castables and also they are, they are precast. The, this, the, 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 the reaction state that we have in this phase that you are looking at that is been determined by the castables and the precast. <coughs> Excuse me. Every other thing here is refractive because the refractory has to be, the reactor has to be refractive, lined, and it has to be able to withstand the temperature that we are subjecting it to. If you don't, it, uh, the right quality of refractory, we are, it's just simply going to fail. We will have hot spots, and before you know it, when we say hot spot, that means the refractory has failed at that particular point. That's what we mean by hot spot. So the, the oil gun is inserted in here. The oil gun, there is an oil gun uh, that is inserted that introduces the oil into the reactor. And that one is inserted right, right there. Uh, and then the additive is the one that comes from that, that, that section area. And it has two tangential corners. Uh, uh, you have one here that's in number four. And also the, the replica of it on the lower one. There. This one is the lower one. And also the other one that's facing the other side is the higher, is the upper one. They are two tangential corners. Radial, so that you have efficient mixing in the, in the reaction zone. So now we have we have the the oil gun that is introducing the oil into the reactor. 
we have additive that is being passed through that place. Remember, we said that we have about 1,100, 1,200 degrees centigrade inside here, and there is a pre combustion zone where the reaction does not take place at all. That is where it just have the high, high temperature. That is this, this section here. And then you have the the, 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 the tangential burners. The tangential burner is started from here and also is started from the other place number four, which creates the efficient phase. And then from there, the, the reaction travels down. That phase, you see, we have to stop the reaction at a particular time. Like I said, if the reaction goes into combustion, you have carbon dioxide and water, and we have not achieved anything. So what we do is that we put a limited amount of air that is required for the hydrocarbon to burn, limited. And also, with the limited amount of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of air that we need to stay, ensure that we stop the reaction. There's a quench. We have a quench to, to stop the reaction from going to combustion. Because if we allow it, we will have the, the carbon to burn. And the oil will burn and will not have any carbon. So these are the typical reactors that you have seen there. Next slide, please. Oh, it's looking fine. It's a bit dark. There are many need to put up this light. And then at any point in time, we can use four, and then one is on standby. We carry out maintenance on it. In case there is any need of one of them going down again, we we'll turn the other one on. But we have been using two reactors for some time because of some exigency. But this is the average, what you are seeing here for each reactor has an air filter. It preheats the oil. I have the air. Okay, there's an oil filter and also the air filter. If you preheat, you are increasing your efficient efficiency. That means you will reduce less oil gas. If you don't preheat, you will, that means you will require larger amount of oil gas for you to achieve the exact, the exact, uh, exact uh, reaction that you actually want. Uh, now those are the five reactors, like I said, each one has its own air filter, then the base there you have the oil, oil filter, and along the line there, that is the length of the reactor you are seeing. Only one reactor is not allowing us to see the other one, but just, they are just packed there. Next slide, please. Pit stop, like I told you, the average pit stop of the decanted oil analysis has been done, it has been carried out, and the pit stop is highly aromatic. Aromatic, that means it's very rich in carbon. So, the average decanted oil, the, the molecular formula, you can see 621, 820 is almost one to one. That means it, it, it's very rich, and that's exactly what we are looking for. We want this. This is what we are looking for in the complex plant. In the reactor, we have several reactions chunks that can take place. We have the, let me start from the, from the bottom, we have carbon. Because somewhere along the line, we check the equation, carbon, we have, we have elemental carbon, which will react with oxygen and have this double element and water. We have hydrogen too, which will react with oxygen and have this. Carbon reacts with the H, the hydrogen, we have acetylene. All along, we have it like that. We have the natural gas methane. Have also the carbon reacting with the uh, oxygen, you have carbon monoxide. But the first one, like I just checked the molecular formula, like when I, I saw the other one, C20, can I call back again? Sorry, the other previous, C21, H28. So that means almost one to one. Next slide. So you find out that it is this actual reaction that we are looking for. And this is what we are looking for carbon. And that is actually the carbon that we are looking for. All other reactions actually take place, but we discourage it. The other reactions take place, but we discourage it. And what, what promotes this first reaction that we see? Due to the high temperature and limited amount of air, that is oxygen that is in the reaction, the first reaction is promoted. Then we don't give it enough air for it to go into completion. We just give it limited amount of air. And like, remember I said, we also quench it. And what we quench is stop the reaction. And the first reaction here, we, we, what, we, what, what we promote, that's the heat of reaction that you see there, carbon, and then, hydrogen. But every other thing here is there, is present in the stream that goes along in the, in the process, but it is not desired. But we refer to it as hot gas. And this has to be taken care of somewhere along the line. We incinerate it. But the important one is the number one reaction which we have there. And that is actually what we are interested in. That is what makes it sound like tea. And that's what we are, we are, that's why we are in business. We stop the reaction. Next slide please. Like I'm saying that we have different kinds of grids, different types of grids that we have in the ground plant. We have the N330, N220, 326, 375. There was a time some customers came to meet us. They wanted us to produce N299. Yes, all we have to do is create our processes, change their reaction, the reaction time, the reaction volume, and the part of uh, the additive that we add. Also, with so many variations that we can do, 
increase severity on our reactor but we'll get there we were ready to produce it for them but they did not sort of come back but the reactors can be berated to produce any kind of break in hard black because we are producing hard black like i said in the in the carbon black right now next slide refractory curling you find out that when refractory in the i'm spending a lot of time on the reactor because like i said if you don't get it right in the, in the reactor you can't get it right anywhere the reactor when it is freshly lined we have to cure it. Why do we have to cure it? Because there are pockets of uh, water, moisture all over in the, in the refractory. So we, they, 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 we have to cure. When the reactor is very reliant, the refractory should be carried there. The refractory should be carried out before using, using the reactor. The refractory curing should be carried out. Curing removes the water moisture in the refractory lining and strengthen the binder. It strengthens the binding that the, the refractory has. If you don't cure and you want to use it like that, it will, you just see it directly. The refractor will fail and you have what we call hot spot. What is hot spot? It tells you that there's a failure there somewhere. In order for it not to, to fail and also to increase the binders in between the refractory, we, we cure it. And what, how do we do the curing? We take the reactor, the, excuse me, the refractory to a, a, a heating core, a heating core that has been determined by the OEM for them to, for us to ensure that the curing takes place. Next slide. Like I was talking about the product specification, the, the parameters that we check in the carbon black plant, what the customers ask for, because before we can give them the product, we have to give them the certificate. And before we give them the certificate, we have to ensure that the specification is up to what we want. And lab, who, if our eyes there in production, in production, we don't see anything, but lab takes sample and tell us our product specification and the plant has to fall within this. If you see that 330, 220 N326 or N375. In 330, for example, you will see the iodine parameter between 82, 82 plus minus 6. And what is the iodine? The iodine measures the surface area. Like I said earlier on, the surface area of the, of the, of the, of the carbon black the spec. In the, the, the iodine number will tell them the amount of the surface area that the carbon black the spec of it has. DVP, the iodine patterly. The iodine patterly describes the, the structure. Because the different grades of black have different structures. So for this particular one, you see that the DVP for this one is different from this, is different from 220375 and 326. All of them are different. So the diabetic pattern is the structure of the carbon black, they are different. And not take sample and they will ensure that it is within specification. The moisture content is one to all, one percent maximum. The customer does not want anything higher than one, and we have to ensure that. The photolometer. The photolometer is the amount of oil, on burnt oil, inside the decanted oil. And we also we have to part of the uh, the parameter that we check. We have to ensure that it is 85 minimum. And then the pore density, just like density of what the each grade is supposed to have. The grade. That's why I said that we treat our pig before we process it in the reactor. If the if we don't treat our pig and remove impurities, our grade will be high. I can see it is maximum that is written there and not minimum. Maximum. So maximum should not be more than that. But if you don't treat it and the, the, the grit is already high in the feed, there's no way you can remove it down the system. And then the pine. Pine, pine is important because when the customer buys our product, you don't want it before they carry it from here to sample how of it has gone into the air. You want to follow, you want to control the amount of pines you have in the product. So they are they can be determined also that the seven there is maximum. It should not be more than seven in the pine. Lab also take those samples for us and let us know the but if, it, if there any of this is out of duration, we do we, we carry out our own adjustment based on the flow into the reactor, the parameters that we have in the reactor, be the oil, the air, the gas, the additive, so many things that we can use in controlling just to get what the customer wants. Like when we have gotten everything right in the reactor and the flow is moving, I remember I said that there is something like up gas. No, we all know what the off gas is now. Off gas is anything that is not that elemental carbon that we want. Be the methane, the hydrogen, the carbon, carbon uh, monoxide, and the rest. Everything falls into the back filter. The back filter, this is the back filter compartment that you are looking at. The back filter it has nine compartments. Nine compartments in the sense that each compartment, one of them is always cleaning. There is a filtering section and also the, the cleaning section. The back filter ensures that there is separation because inside each compartment you have salt. 
sorry, I don't have a picture of the socks there. I probably lay my hands on it. It is where we achieve our separation mode. It is something similar to the socks we wear. If there is a flow of black into a socks, you will imagine that by the time it comes out, some of the particles will be entrained in the socks and the, the one that is gas will call, call, go out. That wall of that sock, something is entrained there which we can shake down. When we shake it, we shake it down into the area we can see very well now, the pulverizer area and also the, 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 the pneumatic, pneumatic blower area. From here is where we transport it down. So what do we do in the back filter? The back filter is what actually filters our product for us. The off gas that we have in the stream, the elemental carbon that we have, we have in the stream there, it has to be separated. We have to produce the carbon black. But we cannot, we, we, we need to separate our product from the undesirable. And we, the undesirable is the off gas. And it's inside this compartment, nine compartments, all of them. And each compartment has about 400, 499 bags about. And then from there, the, the separation is done. The product now, like I told you, if you, you imagine a sock, and there is a product that is going through. Normally, gas will want to come out from the walls of the source, but the, the black will be trapped on the wall of the source. So, all you have to do is shake it down. Where the off gas goes out, the black is trapped and it falls down. And by the time it falls down there, it falls on this screw conveyor, there's a screw conveyor here, which transports it to the, the pneumatic conveyor. What does the pneumatic conveyor mean? In the real sense of the name that it's called pneumatic. That means the, the the, it flows. There's something that transports it down to our own back end. The back end I'll show you later on, and that back end is somewhere that, that, that you are seeing just by the side there. So what we do here, what we want to achieve here, what we are trying to achieve is separation of the black from the object, and from there it is transported. It is also there that the pulverization takes place. There's a pulverizer that pulverizes in case that uh, carbonaceous break. It goes, it, it, it fumels it and breaks it down. Next slide. The pelletizing and drying. You find out that from the back filter area. We are now going to the pelletizing and drying area, and that is the area you have along here. We have the primary back filter, and there's also a secondary back filter. The secondary back filter does the same thing like the primary back filter also does. It does the separation for us. Only this time around, it does it in a final mode that ensures that the rest of the... Because when you say there is a pneumatic, something that carries something pneumatic, it's still carried by air, by gas, or whatever. You still have to get rid of that and have the elemental carbon that you are looking for. Uh, the, the secondary back filter and also somewhere around here, in this section, you have the pelletizer and the wet mixer. What does it do? We have powder now, just like dusting powder. You have to have, and it's, it, 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 it's just like dusting powder. You need to be able to control it. And how do you control it? By the time you wet it. And what, what do we wet it with? Water and a mixture of molasses. You will use molasses. At times you don't use molasses. But the time you use uh, uh, water and pelletize it, you now break it into pellets. And that's what the section does. You have pelletizer and the wet mixer. And you find out that when you have introduced water, you must remove the water. And that's what this, this is the dryer. And this, uh, this guy, the brain uh, equipment here, you see, is supplying the heat to the dryer. So the water that has been introduced to, to bind the pellets into position, the water has to be removed from there. And the drying is achieved. By the time you move from the beginning of the dryer down to the end of the dryer, dry, drying will have been achieved. Yes, by the time we leave the secondary, the secondary back filter and also the, all this research that we are seeing here, that is dry that we just saw now, we have to transport it up. What you are seeing there is the bucket elevators. Bucket, because it has to be scooped. Scoop it in bucket, in bucket, the bucket scoop it and transport it up. By now, what we have here, excuse me, what we have here now are pellets. They are not blocking back the black anymore. They are pelletized and uh, uh, you are having you are, have, you are having pellets moving in the bucket and it is going to the, there is a lower bucket elevator, there is an inter elevator that also transports to the upper elevator. And the essence of moving it up, up, up is to take it into our storage tanks. Up here, we appreciate that metal may have one way or the other falling through the product. So there is a, there's a, there's a magnetic drum up there that separates the metal from the cone black. So the product passes over the magnetic drum before it goes into an elevator there that transports it into the two storage tanks. Inside the two storage tank is still divided into four. Four, but one, one particular section in the four is the off-spec tank. Each, each, each tank has its own off-spec tank, in case depending on the grid that we are producing. Next slide, please. The count black plants, as it is today, what we have as part of our strength is the experienced staff. A lot of our staff over the years have 
we, when we started out, we started with all the expertise and they imparted the knowledge on us. We also tried to impart the knowledge on to other people that are there and it's going down the line like that. Because without that, without the knowledge being passed along, that plan cannot run. The, another strength of this plan that we are talking about is the readily available raw material. We have the content on coming from the FCC plant, just our sister, sister company over there. In some other common black plants all over the world, they have to transport from long distances their feed and it costs them a lot of money. But in our own area here, yeah, we just, uh, whenever the FCC is on, we have a story tank that we tore our own feed into. A lot, we have a lot of storage tank that can have a lot of storage for all. And also, management support. We have a lot of management support in the running of the plant. There's nothing we can do if management does not give us that support, but we have wonderful support from management. Next slide, please. Witness, our witness are lack of critical spares. We are finding out that in the compact plants, most of our spares, we don't have them. Why? Because positive of bond. I don't know. How do I get that message across to us that in the, the economic downturn is affecting all spares of the economy? And bond is not easy to come by. But management is struggling with it. They are, uh, they are interfacing with the federal government to ensure that they get the, the right amount of bond for us to be able to get our spares. And then also, most of our critical spares are not paired. What do I mean by that? When you have a critical equipment that is running and you don't have the B of it, what do I mean by B? They stand by. So there are some equipment that are on standby, but many of our equipment are not on standby. Like our process air is not on standby. Our back filter that I've just shown is only one. It's not only the, the, there's no spare one of it. Our, some of, many of our equipment are just single, single, single. And all of you can know that when any plant that is on single, one leg, it, 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 for one reason or the other, it trips, the plant goes down. But if there's a standby, if it is spared, to quickly switch over to the other to the other to the other equipment. All over the world, when many people have traveled, they are, they, 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 when they say that the equipment are always running, it's running because they have spares. The equipment don't have a spare refinery. So when we want to they switch over to the other one, but here the most of our equipment are not spare. But the next one, the opportunity. What are the opportunities? The complex plant we have constraint now. Our Major customers used to be Michelin and Dunlop. Michelin and Dunlop are no longer in the country. They packed up and they left the country. Why? Because they had problems with energy, power source. So they found out that in the neighboring countries, Ghana and the rest, they could set up shop and they could do their own business cheaper. So they left the shores of Nigeria. But the count black plant as it is now, it is the only one south of the Sahara. The the, the chairman of the National Automotive Council was quoted in the, this day of the this day of 18th of January. It was quoted, and I I, I what to say that the Nigeria expended 550 billion on vehicles and related cars and related vehicles last year 2013. We expended excuse me we expended also 500 billion naira on spare parts. The one that interests me, the one that is coming next. We are spending 150 billion on tires. And the count black plant. This is the one plant that produces the raw material for tires. And the, 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 the people that the companies that produce the count black plant, like produce the tires in our industry, they left the shores of Nigeria because of one reason or the other. Even though the taller tires are not in they are not they are not in service anymore. The all of our Michelin have left, but we have that opportunity. We can capture the market if only we can get our, our part straight. We can also, we, the, the Nigerian rest of Africa can be captured. So for this single plant that the, the raw material is so cheap for us to get, all we have to do is not get our, our, our priorities right, get our equipment, pair the equipment, increase our reliability, we can go to places. Next one. Threats. Yes, we have threats. Part of our threat is the optional discharge into the environment. The, uh, at times, the, the, this is caused by environment, this causes environmental issues. We at times we have leakages, occasional leakages, and it pits us against the community. And uh, the, of course, nobody, if you, if you are what town black, town black is, you, you, you don't enjoy it. But important thing that those occasional times that it does, the, the community don't like it and they are not taking it easy with us. But we are cleaning up our acts and also to be a, 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 a good corporate responsible organization. Then the lack of adequate bonding to procure our spares, like I said earlier on, we don't, the, 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 
because of the economic downturn that is happening all over the world, the, 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 there's a paucity of funds, and we are hoping that management liaison with the federal government to give us the, the funding for us to be able to get our critical space and also pay our equipment so that we can increase our availability and increase our reliability. Because there is no other, no other one, the counter plan that is in Nigeria here, this is the one, part of the phase one for the technical plan that we have here, we should keep it running and also keep it, uh, have the full benefits of what this plan can offer us.